So this will be about how to check and change any constant in your PV device, as well as um, how to vet and verify uh, your product that you were dealing with. And that could be any of the PV mat line or even just the Modbus line that we run. Um, so first thing we want to do is actually go to rainwise.com. And then we want to go to the support section, go to manuals and downloads. And we're going to go to solar monitoring. And once it loads, it's going to be way down the bottom. This is what we want to click. So this is going to basically give the program that we have um, in use so that you can verify um, with a limited number of variables in there. So as an example, that's already going to have your holding registers. That's already going to have your address appropriate, the baud rate appropriate. And this is pretty standard for most of our PV and uh, Modbus line, just as a heads up. So after we go ahead and download that, then install it, uh, you will then see something like this. So this is what we're going to open up. And so first thing we want to do, and this is assuming we're using a 485 to USB converter and we already have the drivers installed. Uh, we are going to go to device manager, which I'm just typing in my search bar on my other screen. Sorry, you can't see it, let me bring it over. So next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and look at ports, common LPT. I wanna make sure that my 485 to USB converter, what, what COM port it's basically on. So now I'm going to go to connection, settings, and as you can see, I've already set it to COM port 59. All these other settings should be appropriate. You shouldn't need to change any of them whatsoever. So I'm just going to hit OK because I've verified my settings. And then I'm going to close this guy out and I'm going to connect it. Scratch that. I'm not going to connect it yet. <sighs> I'm going to go to file open up the appropriate file for what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at a Modbus Mark III, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna open that guy up and then I am going to connect. And as you can see, values populate reasonably quickly. Do not change any of these, please, um, for two reasons. One, it will stay as those uh, settings that you have changed them to. Um, and then two, if somebody else uses it after you, Obviously, they're, they might not know. Um, so this is how many pulls and how many returned good responses we have got. You will see errors on occasion, few and far between. If you have not connected appropriately, or maybe if you haven't downloaded the appropriate driver for your uh, 45 to USB converter, you will see Modbus message timeout here, okay? If you see strictly an RX light only on your PVMet device, I would suggest swapping your comms lines so a b and b to a um, usually that means that it is being queried it just can't identify where it's uh, supposed to be ending up so anyways just quick verification on this for myself just double check in some wind direction and wind speed okay temp should stay the same And we just want to get a little bit on this radiation to make sure that that's appropriately reporting. And it does not like the one I'm using. So that is not good. We need to revisit that. Well, I know I need to go back and double check this later now. So I am now going to disconnect and then I'm going to do a PV mat 150. So if you give me a minute. So I've connected my PV mat 150 board. Um, now here's something that people will do. So I just want to go over it real quick. Um, let's say we want to look up the holding registers. Now this takes up the whole screen. First of all, it's not super easy i've kind of navigated but obviously the yellow boxes are really where we're focusing more than anything because that's the main sensors that you would be looking at so if i go ahead and connect you won't always see this but 
I'm getting this for two reasons. One, because I intentionally have my TX and my RX backwards, um, just to show you that actual message. And then the other thing is going to be the fact that I have this program still open. So even if it was reading, it might not populate on this screen if I still had the other file open. So just so we know. So I'm just going to switch these real quick. And then you're going to see that timeout go away. Hey, look at that values. So this is applicable in a couple scenarios because if I now go to look at my values, these are absolute values that are popping up. Um, these will float sometimes, but this is just because I have no connection to these sensors. So it's just good information to have. Um, so let's say I want to change the sensitivity or the Modbus address. See how that's it actually is popping up. It doesn't always pop up. So I would recommend always closing out the previous window. These are usually set to 500. So what I'm looking for is the first slot's gonna be the global radian scale. Um, second slot's gonna be POA. If you're using a PV map 500, you will have three slots. It will be global, POA, and other. A lot of people just do it as an extra plane um, or potentially ground reflection. So I'm just gonna set it up 500. It updates. It's going to say timeout. It's going to make me a liar. A lot of times it will say timeout because there's a power cycle that should happen after this. I think the 500 automatically does it. The 150 might not automatically do it. Oh, I lied. There it is. So now it's back and we're good. So now I'm going to clear out of this. back to the holding registers and this is when I would be checking my actual uh, readings hey come back so obviously like I said these aren't going to be correct because I don't have a sensor attached but this is the general process that you would go through to either vet or just um, rectify any readings or sensitivity issues so if you were to do a swap of pyranometers let's say from an MS40 uh, to a EKO ML01E, which is standard with a lot of our products, you would certainly need to do a sensitivity change. Mainly, that's going to go from, let's say, MS40 real quick. An MS40 that I have right in front of me is set to, I'm not going to hook this up, but just so you can at least be on the same page with me. Um, so I'd go into constants. Okay. I would look at the actual MS40 and it's gonna say sensitivity of 12.86. So at this point, all I'm literally doing is moving the decimal over two places, two values. So 1286 is going to be my new sensitivity for this MS40. The EKO ML01Es have a sensitivity around 200. So again, or changing the second one, or even changing this one back to uh, in EKO ML01E, I would need to switch the sensitivity. But for this situation, I'm just going to do it on the second one. So at that point, I would move it two decimal places. So it's 201.0. So I'm going to do 201.00. And that's what the sensitivity should be for that. So that would be how you would change and uh, adjust your sensitivity, mainly uh, for verification purposes. All right.